MMA Weekly here with John Bones Jones, getting ready to step back in the cage. It's a little, uh, little disappointing, probably the outcome for you last time. Even though you had a pretty good performance in the cage, the result was a little disappointing, I assume. How, what did you think about the way the whole Matt Hamill situation came out with the disqualification? Uh, yeah, you know, it was really disappointing, but um, it was a good learning experience. You know, it was the first fight that I wasn't, you know, nervous or scared or, you know, it was the first time I had uh, just a good feeling, good vibes, and uh, I had fun for the first time, you know. I'm starting to really look at this sport, even in practice, you know, training against these top-level guys. I'm really starting to just have fun, not overthink anything, and just pull the trigger more often, and and uh, just really look at it as a game instead of uh, the combat that it is. So um, even though, you know, it came, I came out with a loss, um, it was fun, you know, I had a good, a good performance, and I actually, I like, literally had a great time for the first time. So, so overall, you feel pretty good about the way you performed in the ring, and yeah, and how everything came out, other than just the obviously the decision. Yeah, the decision doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you know, it's, it's out. We're out here to you know provide for our families and have a good time. So, I don't really care that it came out uh, now. Um, I had a great time. Uh, getting that loss, so <laughs> not too many good. guys say that, but you had a great time getting the loss. For that's sure, good. for sure, that's good to have such a positive outlook. And I think fans are picking up on that from you. Uh, everybody seems to say, "Hey, that that John Jones guy, man, that guy's badass in the ring." And then it's like uh, he's always happy, he's always smiling. Yeah, for sure. Is that just kind of the way you approach everything? Yeah, just man. Having a good time, doing what you do. For sure, I mean, life's uh, life's too short to. to Cry over spilt milk, you know. Um, you know, I have kids now too, and those guys are my pride and joy. So it's like, um, how many kids do you have? I have uh, two kids. I have two daughters. Really? And uh, oh yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a ten-week-old daughter, Carmen, and I have a nineteen-month-old daughter named Leah. Oh wow. Yeah. So it's like, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, it's about my family, and it's about you know life after the fighting, and and uh, you know the way people remember you is, it's not necessarily about how you fought, you know, it's, it's a lot about character, so, you know, I just try not to cry over spilt milk and just enjoy life, you know, I can't do this forever, so, I'm just gonna ride it till the wheels fall off and enjoy it. Where's that, it. Uh, where did that character come from? I know, uh, especially the way you approach fighting in the UFC is a little bit different than a lot of the other guys that are fighting right now. You bring, it seems like, a little bit more elements from different traditional styles into your style. Is it, What's your background um, in the sport? Well, my background is definitely wrestling. You know, whenever I'm in trouble, I, I, I seem to resort back to using my, uh, my wrestling. But um, I guess my style came from my story, you know. I, I started off, uh, you know, kind of having to teach myself a lot when it came to the striking game. So, um, you know, I just went into it with an open mind. Um, you know, like Bruce Lee says, you, you got to be like water. You got to be able to do a little bit of everything. So when I'm out there, you can't really call me a Muay Thai fighter. You can't call me a Taekwondo fighter. You can't call me a Judo fighter or a Jiu Jitsu fighter. I do a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, just keeping your mind open. And, you know, Greg Jackson camp, we're in the business of finishing fights and breaking our opponents. So, um, you know, I just, I just mix it up with everything. You know, I've, I've learned techniques from YouTube. I've learned techniques from books and from karate people and all types of stuff. So, so um, you really embody the whole Bruce Lee. Just find what works for you and take it and run with it. For sure. I believe that everything can work for you if you practice it enough times. So, uh, yeah, I just, I, just uh, I enjoy the sport. You know, it's martial arts and it's mixed martial arts. So just use it all. Well, that sure comes across in the way you perform and the way you, I think, the way you uh, present yourself to people. So, you got another one coming up here pretty soon uh, in, in Colorado. You're fighting Brandon Vera. Both of you guys are coming off of a disappointing loss. I, you know, I mean, you you were really happy with your performance. A little bit of a disappointment in the way the DQ came out. But then Brandon also feels like he kind of came out on the short end of the stick against Randy Couture. So, you feel like that's going to have much effect on this fight for you guys, or do you think you're both just you know, let's put that behind us and let's do what we got to do for this one. Um, you know, I don't really know what Brandon's thinking or how he, you know. Yeah, obviously I can't put you in his head. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know uh, what's going on with that guy. Um, you know, we, we both kind of put our fights in the referee's hands in a little bit, you know, in certain ways. I I was doing good. I was on my way to a, you know, a really dominating performance and, uh, and I messed up. I got too excited. You know, I was looking, looking for ways to finish the fight, legal or not legal. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was inexperienced. Obviously, I didn't do it on purpose. But, uh, yeah, like I said, man, I'm, I'm about my family, man. At the end of the day, you know, it's about my family. So, um, 
you know, my job is as a 22-year-old, I want to make as much money in the sport as possible to be a provider. I want to be able to retire one day with a head on my shoulders. I want to, you know, I want to, you know, fulfill all my goals. I know what my goal is. I know what my dreams are. And uh, Brandon Vera, no matter what his situation is and how he feels about his career, his ups and his downs or whatever, it has nothing, you know, I'm just... I know what I want, and he's in the way of that, so who cares how hard he's training, what's in his mind, if he's in his prime or is he on his way down. None of, you know, it's, it's about what I want, and I want that belt. I want to be a provider, and uh, no one's going to stop that. No one. Both you guys bring a pretty well-rounded game, and uh, I think you both have pretty exciting styles to most of the fans, and I think that's what people uh, expect to see, and I think that's probably what you guys will give them. Do you think that... Uh, Somebody of Brandon's caliber gets you where you need to be in that next step towards the title shot? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not really worried about the title shot right now. I know I have a lot of learning to right, do. Right, but, it, but it's a step, right? I mean, he's yeah, moving Brandon's, you that one step closer, that one step closer. For sure. Beating Brandon is definitely a, uh, a step in the right path. You know, he's a respectable opponent. Um, you know, do you think he has a style that makes you have to perform at another level to take your game to another oh, level and, sure. and really grow your style? Absolutely. You know, uh, the top guys in the division are all great strikers. They're all well-rounded. And Brandon Vera is a well-rounded fighter. He's a great striker. Um, you know, I've said it several times before, when you beat people who are supposedly better strikers or better jiu-jitsu, better wrestlers, um, it elevates you, you know. And um, in, order, in order to be at the top, you got to take down a great striker. Uh, you got to take down a great wrestler. you got to take down a great jiu-jitsu artist, um, you know. Uh, Machida, Shogun, uh, all the top guys, these guys are, they're really good at this stuff, you know. If I can't beat a Brandon Vera, how you expect me to beat a, uh, a Shogun or a Machida or, so, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking to elevate with every uh, tough guy I fight, so it's going to be great. So you feel like you can beat that Brandon Vera and take that next step? I have no doubt in my mind that I can beat Brandon Vera. I've watched tons of his films several times before, and uh, at the end of the day, I just don't get, like, this uh, crazy fear or, or anything. I respect his game. I know that he has tons more experience than me, and he's been in the Octagon so many times, but um, I have no doubt in my mind. You know, Greg Jackson, Phil Nurse, uh, Winkle John. Uh, Keith Jardine, uh, just so many people. I just have so much power in my corner, and uh, I do everything right. I sleep early, I eat healthy, and uh, this camp is amazing. And there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to beat Brandon Bear. You think this camp's going to be the one to take you towards that title shot eventually? Absolutely. Time? Absolutely. You know, Greg Jackson's been proven over and over again to be one of the best coaches in the world. Uh, the strategy that I go over every day, um, you know, the, the strength training, it's just, you know, there's like eight UFC fighters walking around that's always trying to help me out. i got tons of guys who's 6'4", 6'2", to kickbox with every day. And it's just a great camp. There's a reason why a lot of the top fighters train here. It's, uh, you know, no one comes here and leaves for the most part. It's, uh, it's an amazing place to be. It's good people come here to become champions? Absolutely. This is a school for champions. All right. Well, John Jones, thanks for talking to us at MMA Weekly, and good luck with your fight, Brandon Vera. Hey, thanks for having me.